Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we did this video right here, and we were talking about how we are on the precipice of something huge. We have two huge cases awaiting a ruling any minute now. One is called Duncan v. Bonta. The other one is Miller v. Bonta. They are both challenges that stem from California. One deals with their assault weapon ban. The other one deals with their magazine ban. And after ricocheting around the Ninth Circuit, the United States Supreme Court, they are now back before the original trial court, Roger T. Benitez. The brief are in, the deadlines have been met, and we are waiting a ruling any second. But is it possible that the gun-grabbing left is going to actually try to cancel Judge Benitez before he gets a chance to make a ruling? Well, desperate people sometimes resort to desperate measures, and this may be one of them. So today, I'm going to spend a few minutes and give you a very troubling story about how the left is going to try to cancel Judge Benitez. Okay, so the cases we're talking about today are Miller v. Bonta and Duncan v. Bonta. They are two cases. We've talked about them plenty of times on this channel, and everyone out here in the YouTube reverse has been talking about it. One deals with California's assault weapon ban. One deals with California's magazine ban. They are both sitting before the Honorable Roger T. Benitez. We are awaiting rulings at any moment now, and we do anticipate popular rulings. Now, we know that they may be popular to us in the Second Amendment community, but they certainly are not popular to Governor Newsom. Let us remember what Governor Newsom had to say just a couple of weeks ago about Judge Benitez. I look forward to Judge Benitez's decision. It's already written. He's likely to overturn our assault weapons ban. Stay tuned. That's a preview of things to come in the next few weeks. Large capacity magazine clips, that will likely also be thrown out by the same ideologues. And, of course, that didn't stop the governor there because he also had to equate this. Presumably, somehow equating those that are doing the same with AR-15s or other assault weapons to those with muskets. I mean, it's perverse. The whole thing is perverse. Well, what drew our attention to our concerns over Judge Benitez is a recent article from the San Diego Tribune which, of course, was proudly supported by Governor Newsom with this tweet right here. Now, it appears that last week, Judge Benitez had a sentencing hearing in front of him for a gentleman who had already served a five-year prison sentence for drug distribution. The gentleman had violated his terms of probation and was back before Judge Benitez facing additional incarceration time. During the gentleman's right of allocution, he began to speak of his young daughter and the fact that he was concerned that she was going to turn out exactly like him, that she was growing up in the same neighborhood that he had grown up in, that she was running around with the same types of people that he'd run around with. Judge Benitez, for whatever reason, decided to call the young lady up to counsel table and then asked a marshal to place her in handcuffs and put her in the jury box for a moment. Now, obviously, this 13-year-old girl was horribly traumatized. She broke down in tears, and Judge Benitez had the handcuffs removed from her and then lectured her about how he wanted her to remember what that felt like and that the next time she has an opportunity to make smarter choices about growing up that she remembers what that experience was like. Now, I'm not sticking up for Judge Benitez. I'm not necessarily condemning what Judge Benitez did. Candidly, if I were on the bench, and I am not on the bench, but if I were on the bench, I don't believe I would have done that. However, you can imagine what the reaction is because defense counsel for the gentleman who was facing an additional 10 months in prison immediately notified the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit Chief Justice Mary Merguia has now disclosed this incident and a formal complaint has been filed in the Ninth Circuit against Judge Benitez. Now, this complaint could involve several different results. Number one, the complaint could just be thrown out as meritless or not warranting any kind of disciplinary action. Uh, Judge Benitez could be given a letter of reprimand. He could be required to do mandatory training. But one of the other options is that the Ninth Circuit could impanel a committee and do a full-blown investigation on this. And we know what political ammunition something like that would give those on the gun-grabbing left. Naomi Evans, who's the director of the California Coalition for Juvenile Justice, was a little taken back by Judge Benitez's actions. In fact, she was quoted as saying, I'm just really surprised that any judge or any person would feel the need to handcuff someone in front of others when there is absolutely no wrongdoing. Now, Judge Benitez may have been trying the old scared straight tactic, and while I do think that that can be effective for some young people, I think research has shown that it's not particularly effective for most young people. 
More importantly, he has brought about scrutiny to his demeanor and his bench that is not necessary, certainly not at this critical time. The San Diego Tribune was very quick to point out that in 2003, when being nominated for this position by President George W. Bush, that the American Bar Association had rated him as not qualified. The bottom line is, is there may not be a lot here, but that is not going to stop the left from running roughshod with this story. Don't believe me? Take a look at how they ran with the Jesse Smollett story. Don't believe me? Take a look at how they ran with Border Patrol agents who were supposedly whipping illegal immigrants at the border with horse raids. So the bottom line is, is Judge Benitez has put himself under an unnecessary microscope and one that we in the 2A community cannot afford right now. I am sure there's going to be more to this because I do not believe that the gun grabbing left will ever allow this to rest. Listen, you may have more questions about this or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights. You guys should know the drill by now on how to reach us. In the meantime, remember, the only way you can always ensure that you're the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about here all the time at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay safe.